everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. That guy is Nick. Hello, Nick. What's up? How's it going? Good man. And with us is a, a returning guest, but we get him solo today, Mr. Patrick Dancy. You may remember him from The Guys Next Door and Family Matters and a whole bunch. Of, he was in Saved by the Bell yeah, and uh, now a crazy, awesome entrepreneur who's a good friend of ours. And we're glad you're back, man. How are you? Uh, we're great, man. I'm great. You guys, like I said, you guys look amazing. Thank you for having me back. It's good to be back. You guys, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if it's skincare or anything. Because the last time I saw you, I don't know. I'm looking at you, and you guys, you guys look great, man. It's good to be back. Thank you, man. We appreciate that. If, if, if I, as I far as shower this morning. <laughs> yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I think, man, did we do it via? It was via Zoom, but yes. I personally have upgraded that guy right there. Yeah, I see. So, it. so, so cool. the camera may be a little bit better. Oh, well, maybe that's it. And I dyed my beard again, Nick. So you know, oh, I've got man. young. <laughs> Dude, come on! <laughs> what I can't yeah, just help go it, man. Gray. Just, just go, just go with it. Oh, it Patrick, it do you have do you have gray beard yet? I have gray stubble. I don't really fully let it come in to look like a beard, but right. it comes in. And the way I kind of keep it, I I like it. I, I shaved it down today, but sometimes it comes in a little thicker. But nothing like that. That's. That's that's the real thing, right there. Yeah, this is it's pretty much almost all white for me now, and wow. I and I, I'm I'm not ready to accept that fate. So <laughs> I've I've decided that until this matches this, I will keep dying this to match that the best I can. And Nick gets mad at me for doing so, but I, I now have you found the color? Have you found the color that's matching yet? Well, it, it's pretty close, color? right? Yeah, it looks good. I would have never guessed. It's pretty Honestly. close. It, it's funny because there is enough red in there still, uh, Auburn, whatever you want to call it, to uh, mask the light brown, and then it grows out a little bit. And then right now we're at that perfect state. I get a week of perfect, and then it's all shot to hell. Wow. Right off the bat, we're talking about beard and colors, and this is my fault. Uh, last <laughs> yeah, time you're on, Patrick, we, we didn't have the opportunity to really dive deep into you yeah. um, because yeah. we obviously had a few other guests on that particular show. Um, if you are watching this YouTube video, I will link that particular episode right up there. That's in the future. And uh, check that one out if you're interested. But I'm super, super stoked to get into the nitty gritty with you today. Um, so let's ask you again the rite of passage that is with DadCast, which we already know the answer, but we're going to do it anyway. Is Patrick Dancy a dad? Yes. <laughs> Very proud to be. Yes, and how? I, and it's, it's it's you know what I already know the answer, but I got to ask it again. How many kids? Just one right now. One right now. Ooh, yeah. that leaves the Ooh. option open for more. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Okay. You Is want, that you something? Want to dive into my trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you want to dive into my life? <laughs> well, I've been there once, and I'm I'm not afraid to go there again. I embrace it. So when it happens, it will happen, and you guys will be the first to know. Yes, yes. we love that. How old is your daughter now? She just turned 22 on April 14th. She's so, an amazing human being. Honestly, she makes me very happy. Proud. Birthday, girl. Yeah. 22. Patrick, yeah. you are the Last father of an adult child. Traveling. I am. I am. Say again, Nick? She was traveling last time we talked to her at school or something. Yeah, she, she still is. She's still okay. overseas. She's in the UK yeah. at the University uh, of, of Nottingham over there. And she's, oh, so she's cool. an amazing young lady and she inspires me always. So, yeah, I'm a dad big time. Oh, man. I love it. I love it, man. Inspiring others. You see, everyone watching this right now, live or in the future, if it's pre recorded, what well, isn't be pre recorded? That man right there. And that's what it's about being excited about being a dad and stoked about it. And you heard him a few minutes earlier say he leaves the door open. Now that leads begs the question Is there uh, any subtle attempts at becoming a dad again happening? Has that been discussed with the lady or is it just. So let's just leave it here. Okay. No, let's leave it here. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, practice is a good thing. You know, yeah, my lady, yep. after uh, my second kid, they they uh, removed the factory and put in a playground. There you go. So, yeah, man, there's probably don't need to practice now. It's just, you know, riding that merry-go-round. There you go. There you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> I want to take you back. And then again, anyone watching this right now, if you got a question for Patrick, feel free to chime in. Uh, you can actually call in and we can bring you on the show with us. It's a fun platform. Thank you very much, Bullhorn. Uh, we love this. Uh, we love this app, man. It's good stuff. Um, I want to take you back. If you can remember that far back, Patrick, okay. it was about 22 years and nine months ago, give or take. Got it. And a revelation was revealed to you. You were going to become a dad. Can you remember the emotions that went through yourself that day? I remember exactly where I was vividly. As a matter of fact, that's such a great question. Thank you. I was, it was in the, I believe it was the end of August, maybe. And I was on the set of a television show um, called The Pretender. And I was playing a character, top of show. And I remember I got the call. I got the phone call. Uh -huh. And, you know, you're going to be a dad. And I just remember being hyper still, excited, but overwhelmed. Um, and just embraced it and went and shot an amazing television show from that. Like it was one of the best, the, the, the best pieces of work I've done on television to date, as a matter of fact. If you guys are out there, it's on Hulu. It's The Pretender. The name of the episode is Angel's Flight. It was fantastic to shoot that episode with the people from that show. So you all got to check that out because yeah. that's some real emotion and some real acting and crazy stuff happened on that particular day. Amazing. Yes. All right, Patrick, fast forward nine months. Yes. It is the day of delivery. Were yes. you there? What were your emotions? That, how was that experience for you? Oh, it was incredible. It was the best experience. So before it, I had friends who had had children and all my, my buddies were like, dude, you're going to cry. I'm like, what? I'm good. Dude, I'm telling you, you're going to cry. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. She was born 8.30 p.m. Friday night, April 14th, 2000. And when she first came out, the umbilical cord was wrapped twice. So, you know, all these technicians come in. They're excellent how they came in. They didn't want to alarm the mother, her mother, right? So... They just come in quietly. They undo the umbilical cord. I'm watching everything. I'm fastened on this. And here's the truth, guys. As she's being pushed out, and as I see her little hiney, I lose it. <laughs> yep. Lost my mind. I saw this human being that I had something to do with, you know? And here she is. She comes into the world. And I was, I was in awe. I was in awe. I was captivated. She was six pounds, nine ounces, 22 inches. I'll never yes. forget it. You know, this is a proud and good Papa. Cause all these facts, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lie to you, man. I, I can't recall <laughs> the exact <laughs> weight of any yeah. of my kids. I, I, I can, I can nail the birthdays and I can nail the time and the place and where we're at and everything that was involved. But Man, I, I don't have I don't have weight down. So no. kudos to you. Thank Amazing. you. And it was something incredible. This is a true story. It's all about mind body. And when Lola was inside her mother's belly every morning, I would somehow you know just say good morning and speak to her. Sometimes I would sing. And the day she came out, and the doctors put her on the way station, the warming table, she was looking the other way, and I said, Lola Bell. And this child turned her head, heard me, and looked right into me. And it was done from then on. I was like, done. <laughs> you got Pretty it. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good stuff, man. I love, I love asking those questions and hearing those stories. Um, and the fact that you can recall it so vividly. Mm, yeah. That says she, something, man. Yeah. She, uh, she, she, I flew to the UK last year to visit her for her 21st birthday and to be there the day she's born and then to watch her do this rite of passage and the, the young woman she's grown into and the responsible being she is and the creative inspired young lady she is. I just, I'm like, yes, thank you. 
were yeah, drinks okay. had on the 21st birthday with dad? She, she doesn't drink. She, 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 oh. does, she doesn't drink. But, you know, the celebration was intoxicating enough, you know, just to, 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 to be there with her and to yeah. watch that was incredible. incredible. And over in the UK, I think it's 18 anyway for our yeah, alcohol. Yeah. And yeah. that really, yeah. man, I, I, I remember how just baffled I was. My parents took me to you know, Europe for my uh, graduation. So I was 18. And I found out you can drink beer legally at 16 <laughs> years old and hard alcohol at 18. So uh, needless to say, it didn't go well for me, man. I uh, <clears throat> didn't take long. Three or four German <laughs> beers. And that was that. Uh, Nick. Yo. So I, I, I kind of want to pass. This is once again me trying to not talk so much. Um, I have went down the Patrick Dancy rabbit hole earlier today on my research, even though I knew, but I was trying to come up with something that I didn't know. And I happened to click on the images and I happened to click on the fact one and he's half naked and went, man, this man's in shape. <laughs> and Nick is in shape and likes to work he out. Is. So this is the part where I give it to Nick for a bit to discuss all things health and workout. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah. So uh, Nick is a beast, <laughs> by the way. I, I, I watch his workouts. He's very, very, very focused. I love it. I, you yeah, gotta, I gotta be at three thirty a.m. I gotta get better at my folk, my my filming though. Like it's sometimes I have an, there's an older gentleman that goes to the gym with me. And if he's up at three, he's all about grabbing the camera and following me around. And those those videos come out better. The ones where I'm on the tripod just doing my thing and just like just totally into the Britney Spears or whatever I got on the plate. <laughs> he said that. He said that. He said that. I, I, in sync, Britney Spears. I, dude, <laughs> sappy, sappy love songs, man. That gets me going. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, you're, sorry. You're pumping iron to hit me, baby, one more time, really? <laughs> yeah, dude. You've seen, yeah, you've seen the video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, since since you, uh, you you blatantly missed the uh, the give I was giving you, Nick, here we go. Patrick, what do you do as far as your uh, workout regimen and eating and health lifestyle to obviously keep in such great shape at 29 years old, man? How'd you know? Uh you know, for me, it's honestly, it's a great question. It's lifestyle, man. It's it's a choice. It's a it's a willful, conscious choice to live the best way I can live, and that includes everything. That includes um, time to myself. That means time with others socially. That means the way I eat, the way I rest, and the way I train. It all goes together. So. For me, I take it very serious. I take it as serious as Nick does. Um, See, I was going to get there with with my questions. <laughs> I was working. Okay. On so I've been doing a lot of like reading and stuff on like Sean Whalen, the Lions Not Sheep guy, uh, Ryan Stuman, Gary V, and it's a lot of that is your mindset, your how you how you treat yourself, and kind of I've taken those steps into my workouts now, where it's more of. I'm not just going to the gym just to go to the gym. Now it's like I've got an hour and a half of clearing my head, not thinking about life, what's coming up next. You know, just I'm in there clearing my head, just getting right with myself. And I've noticed my workouts have become a million times better. You know, it's incredible because now you're really starting to speak a language that I'm really very, very native. And I'm, I'm very about um, if you guys see my social media, if you see my stories, mm -hmm very much into mindset and how important um, the health of how we think and the thoughts we think and how those thoughts truly have impact. And as you said, um, now that you, in neuroscience, you learn that you've actually added meaning to what you're doing. So you could go to the gym every day, right? And just do it, right? right. You could really add some meaning to that. Mm -hmm. And that in itself informs your body and your mind coherently Right. So that's why you see more progress out of your mm -hmm. body. That's why you enjoy it more because there's more meaning to it, right? Yeah. And then also the productivity without your daily life too. Like I feel like I'm accomplishing a lot more with the podcast and getting deals done and there's all kinds of stuff. Just Everything just, works, right? I'm selling cars. I've sold a lot of cars. It's, it's so weird. It's like everything is like clicking. I'm like, okay, this, this there is something to this. There's a reason why Mark Wahlberg does this. There's a reason why The Rock does this. There's but a reason to your point, Nick, it, 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 but it's because of you. It's not something yeah. outside of you. Right. Listen to that. It's not something outside of you. It is a the conscious choice, the will, right. the intention to say, I'm going to get up at 3 a.m. in the morning 
and I'm going to overcome my tired. Oh, I don't really want to do it today. My aches. I'm going to overcome myself in that manner so that I can execute and achieve the goals that I want. And as a result of that, that ethic right there, the outworkings of that conscious choice plays out in every part of your life. That's why everything's clicking because you're clicking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe I need to start working out a little then. <laughs> I think you should. But the- Avery. Avery wanted to come in and obviously just completely snowball this podcast because that's what my little does and say hi to Patrick. So say hi, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good. She said, if you didn't I'm hear. I'm that way too, you know. <laughs> really? You know, he's a, he's a famous movie star. I mean, TV star, movie star, all around everything. I'll show you one of her shows later. She's like, not impressed. All right. She's like, not impressed, man. Not impressed. All right, little girl. Yes, you can go play. <laughs> Bye. Love you. She waited yeah, that whole time just so I could answer. I, I yeah, love we ended up bringing in like a business consultant to help us out too with the whole podcast. And I feel like a lot of things are aligning and a lot of things are like just everything is just, it's just amazing. Like we're, we're hitting yeah. huge numbers on social media. We're hitting big numbers on YouTube and, so it's just, and I feel a lot of it is like, you know, just going back to the whole, just getting right with you and kind of figuring everything out from there. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And, and that's the, that's how I live my life, gentlemen. That's how I, I approach every day. I wake up in the morning and I'm extremely thankful that I get to open my eyes and have a vivid animated day that at any time in that day, should I have a rough spot, I get to call my mother. I get to hug my fiance. I get to go have lunch with my dad. I'm here. So as long as I'm here and I'm vivid and I'm animated, I get to choose. I get to still put my say into the day, right? So that for me is, it, that has value. I want to I want to get up every day with that. I want to get up every day excited to see the day, excited to contribute to the day, not just to myself, but having loved on myself enough, how do I get to others now? How do I share that and infect people with that? Versus what we see in the narrative all the time, right? Why I can't know. everyone be like that? It's a choice, though, brother. I mean, it comes it out but it's not a point. hard choice when you think about it. I agree. I mean, the alternative is so much more effort. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, and and why it is why I don't understand why people. All right. I got to go off the decision. rails a little bit. Okay. Gonna, I got to bring up Twitter. What do you all <laughs> think about Elon Musk buying Twitter? What are, what are the thoughts? Me personally, you know, I, I'm not surprised. You know, it'll be interesting to see what comes after. Um, I, I think he's a businessman at the end of the day. It's about dollars and cents for him. I think the way, again, the news and the way, you know, social media and how everything present is presented to us. But outside of that, it's a business deal. It's an acquisition like anything else. Right. right? I think uh, I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, But to get deeper, if Elon is going to do what he says he was going to do with the whole purpose of purchasing Twitter, which is, you know, taking it private and then freeing it up because he's very, very adamant and and thinks that free speech is fundamentally the most important thing about a democracy or republic, whatever you want to call it. And I agree um, that I think it could be a very good thing and the very, the beginnings, the foundation of all the negatives that we've grown into social media over the past few years. This may be hopefully the beginnings of that turning the tide into not being quite as negative. Maybe. Cause when you talk about free speech and you know, what Twitter did is they shadow ban people and he wants right. to get rid of that. And shadow banned is, you know, you can still, type what you want and put it out there, but they no are one's seen it. <laughs> right. Exactly. And um, he wants to get rid of all that. Now that's fine and dandy. Free speech is important, but free speech uh, on that level, um, it could be very dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know, if you get one I, guy who is going to put out the worst possible scenario or whatever, as far as negativity is concerned, and then you get a million followers getting back behind that guy. Where does it lead us? But you know, it, that's it, it, me thinking way too far ahead. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, go ahead, finish. I I think it could be the beginnings of something good, um, but 
can he buy Facebook too, please? I'm just <laughs> saying. Actually, it, it's so I have friends that work for Facebook, and I've heard there's rumors that that could happen. So when Facebook and Instagram became Meta, it was supposed to become part of Twitter as well and make it the whole metaverse. Obviously, that didn't happen. That's never going to happen now, unless Elon and Zuckerberg have some kind of <laughs> relationship or something that they can make it coexist. But I don't know. I, I think the bullying, though, I think that's that's kind of my concern is like, yeah, free speech for sure. Like, say what you want to say. But there's also people that go on and bully people for what they believe in. I think that's taking. That's what I was alluding to. Yeah. Sure. Can I? Can I? Can I just? I want to jump in here really quick because my mind works in a way where I'm trying to solve the problem, and it's just how my mind works, right? So, solve it, man. I'm here. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm not bored. saying I'm going to solve it. Full I'm, send. But but I'm just looking at it. I'm thinking. I'm like, maybe we step back from it. Right? Maybe free speech involves um, critical and intelligent minds to understand. And maybe that's not even the right way to put it. Maybe, um, but I feel as though we have to approach social media and our freedom of speech with the understanding that when I go here, when I choose to participate here, if I'm logging in to PC or laptop on my device, I have to understand as a being, a human being, that most of this has nothing to do with reality. So me to get butthurt over some guy out there that I don't know if Tuesdays come in twos or I don't know you. I don't know you or you. Yeah. So I, I think it starts with the individual. Again, it always starts with the person in the mirror. I think we also have to allow it to be what it is in the in the context of what it is. And we shouldn't take what some stranger says to us on the internet home with us all the time. We've got to be better filters. We've got to understand what's real and what's virtual, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when we log off, we all go to sleep or we all go to the bathroom or we all go say goodnight to our children, right? So what's the drama, right? Understand what it is. This is just what it is. Keep it over there. Let it be what it is. But when I get off of it, this is where I am. My vivid real life amongst friends and family where I really get to contribute versus, oh, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, oh great. Well, sh -sh -sh -sh. That's where everybody is, right? Yeah. So why is everybody up in a storm? It's like, well, understand what it is. Put it over there. I think it's the... Uh, That's just me. Especially Sorry. the younger, the younger generation. Uh, yeah. hell, even 35 and below now, um, have a hard time deciphering that, you know, because to them, this is very much real. I think it's the money situation too. I think it's the fact that if you become an influencer, you can make more money than your dad who worked his whole entire life in the mill, busting his ass where you don't have to do shit. You're just on taking pictures of yourself and all of a sudden you're a millionaire. Yeah. I think that's kind of the, the another disconnect too of like these kids are like, oh my God, I can take a funny picture or a suggested picture and become internet famous. And I, I think that's a huge issue. There's a lot of beguiling factors to it. There's a lot yeah. of that. I yeah. get all that. But I think there's a certain responsibility. We we all fill out something when we're setting up a profile. We all agree <laughs> with something, right? Yeah. Right? So we're agreeing to keeping it within the context of what it is. And I think sometimes when we're trying to infringe on people's rights to say whatever they want, it's like, whoa, this is what this is for. Yeah. You know I think, what I mean? I think instead of all the, you know, 87 pages of fine print and disclaimers that no one ever reads, um, it should just say to participate on this platform, whatever it may be, please don't be an asshole. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Click. There you go. Accept. <laughs> move on, man. Move Let's on. go. And as soon as you're an asshole, you're you see it. Yeah. <laughs> but that would go against the whole free speech thing. Or if we could all just learn mind. to agree to disagree. If yeah. somebody puts something you don't be like, kind, man. Be more yeah. kind. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's an inter interesting place, and um, we all have a responsibility, and uh, it's 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 so interesting where it's all going. So back to Elon Musk. I think it's a business transaction. It'll be interesting to see 
where it all takes us. He's an exciting person to watch. He's very involved in his life and in society and his artwork and his technology. Because I think the way he, he, he lives like an artist. Yeah, he's a technical guy. He's, a, he's an entrepreneur, but he's very artistic in his mm -hmm. approach to things. And I, I love I'm talking about my hands a lot. Wow. Look at that. I do the same thing, and my lady hates it. She always – but she only brings it out when we're arguing. <laughs> you're she, you know, and I'll, I'll get excited for something, and I'll be using my hands all the time, and, and but only when we're fighting does she bring it up. Like, Stop doing this. Why are you doing this? Why are you gonna? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. Sorry, honey. If you're watching, no, it's all right. I just caught myself. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what? What did I get you? What's so funny? Oh, uh, uh, just you and Jen fighting. Just it makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, I well, glad that you get some humor out of it. I love that dolly photo over your right shoulder. The uh, which one? The dolly right there. I love it. That? Yeah. Are, are you talking to Nick or me? I'm talking to you. Okay. Uh, that's dolly, did you say? It, it looks like Salvatore Dolly from here. Oh, that's Bill Murray, man. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think you should probably hide Bill Murray. It looks like dolly from here. It, it, it kind of does. It kind of does. <laughs> it does. The angle I'm seeing it. Is at it the better? angle, which Bill I was Murray? looking at. It. Now it looks like Bill Murray because you told me, <laughs> but you put him back a little bit. He does look like Dolly. Yeah, he's looking like Dolly again. Yeah, I think we need to find you a new picture. Apparently, Bill Murray's an asshole. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I thought you were talking to Nick there because I'm like, I, Salvador Dolly. I, like, I, 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 is, where is it? Yeah. Where is it, Nick? <laughs> that's that. my uh my chivon bill murray that was a christmas gift that was painted for me by a friend uh, she you? knows i'm a huge bill murray fan and uh, that was actually hanging up above my bed for the past six years and my lady finds like you gotta take that down man yeah. so here it is in the studio there you go. i haven't I even hung that. it up yet <laughs> good stuff all right oh man so geez nick did you see that that you, we went off the rails with that one, but it was yeah. a very, very good topic. I, I could talk I, about Elon Musk and social media and the talk about pros and cons of it all day, and how you need to be responsible. And you have a whole bunch of fans that are watching you, and then you slap Chris Rock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, are we going to go there now? Well, yeah. Patrick, we haven't discussed that one with you. Yeah, uh, I'm so. So are you I just, pro? Are you are you team team Smith or team Rock? Hold on, hold on, this hold way, on. I love let, both of them. I know. Let, let me bring up why I'm bringing this up. I, so I'm I, watching I, National Geographic, watching Will Smith's special, right? Which is amazing. He's, he's going all over the world, and then he slaps Chris Rock, and they cancel it, so I can't finish it. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I love both men. I think both men are extremely talented. Both are strong men. Uh, I had the great pleasure of, of actually uh, promoting my television show called The Guys Next Door on NBC, along with the whole lineup, uh, including at that time in, 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 in history, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And that's where I met Will. And, you know, he was amazing. And then you to see him grow into what he's grown into and his success. So he's always been an inspiration. I thought the action itself demonstrated to me personally and if Will asked me this person, I would say, my dude, you know, this is what I saw. Uh, it doesn't mean this is what it is. But this is what I saw and from where I'm looking. I think Will felt great pressure that day. I think he was on center stage like none before. This film was very important. I watched it. I told my lady, I said, he's going to get nominated for this. Phenomenal film. He was going up against a great actor, Denzel Washington, Javier Bardem, a bunch of people. And I think nerves, insecurity, uh, ego, survival, all played in. And when he smacked Chris, I felt it for <laughs> Chris. Yeah, I think because if you look at Chris's face, he's like his eyes immediately, and that's probably what I would have done. Well yeah. done, in shot like what? Mm -hmm. You know, and then to hear. The anger follow he, yeah. the the acidic nature of how he spoke at him in front of the whole world, not just an audience, the whole, whole world. It was it was unfortunate, and, and I, I felt I, I felt really really um, 
I felt bad for all of them. And then to see him get up and, 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 and I think his actions previous to him winning robbed that moment for his yeah. win. He robbed himself of a moment we all could have shared with him. But by the time he wins it, we're all going, huh? Yeah, we're still yeah, reeling we're still, uh, what recovering just from what yeah. Because in, 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 didn't we all go kind of go like this? Didn't yeah, we all? I thought it was, it was fake. When right? it first happened, I'm like, is this scripted? Is this like – because like Chris Rock, the composure that dude had was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. It was – Will Smith is a big dude. Like, if, I was, if somebody slaps me, I'm going down. Like, the composure <laughs> he had and how – just gracious he was after it happened instead of just losing the shit was amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Kudos for rock for handling that Yeah. again, though, thrust in that position and being on that stage in front of the entire world. Um, I bet you if they were alone, it probably would have worked out differently. Who knows? But the fact that I'm oh, now, I went off track. What was going? Oh, I was watching it by myself. And for that particular moment, and as it's unraveling, I go from the slap to what the to yeah. just a few seconds later him screaming what he does says to him and I and I and I get embarrassed. I'm by myself and I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, There's no one everyone. around. There's no one looking at me and I'm feeling just so uncomfortable, so strange, embarrassed for what just happened. And and it took me a while to digest what the heck just happened as well. And then like you said, just a few minutes later, here the man wins. You know the light, the, the achievement. I mean, come on, in your industry, that that is that is the yeah, top of the mountain, the, man. That's and the that's and the brass ring. It's a damn shame because I love me some Will Smith. Same, and and you know what? It's it's interesting because I felt great compassion for him when he was accepting his speech and he was crying. I don't know this to be certain. I don't know this to be true. But knowing what I do know about him. I think it was, I think he let himself down and he knew it yeah. in that moment. I think he knew it. And I think some of that was contrition. He wasn't going to share it, you know, but I think really, and I felt great compassion for him. I hope um, he can recover from this because I don't think he's, he should be defined by this. Right. No, absolutely right? not, not at all. This should um, be just a paragraph in a very small chapter in the book of Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. And then he should go on um, uh, continuing to evolve into the best version of, of himself as I believe he is, uh, you know, doing day to day. I don't think it's something where you cancel someone because they did it. Is it unfortunate? It's unfortunate. But we live and we learn. You know, we all take an L. I always say this. I'm taking L's. And they're like, what? I'm taking lessons. Nah, not well. You see it. It's how you see it. Yeah. You choose to see the losses or you choose to see the lessons. I choose to see the lessons. I never lose. I just win or I learn something. Facts. Write that down, Nick. <laughs> and everyone else watching this, right. write that down. That's important. Yeah. That is something. That is a lesson. I'm going to go say that to my son as soon as we're done. You know, it's I took that. That is a lesson I'm going to teach my son. I might even put it on a poster board and stick it up right on his wall when he wakes up. You either win or you learn. Oh, you learn. You never take a loss. That's amazing. And, and you know what, brother? That's a win-win. It may yep. not be in the moment. It may not be in the moment. But if you think about it, in your evolution as a being, you face something again. You don't have that rock in your pocket. That rock has been alchemized. It's now a gem. You learn something at the last event. You can now look at it with wisdom and say, no, I learned something. I had that. So when, you know, the, uh, there's a saying I believe in. We don't see the world how it is. We see the world how we are. And everything comes out of that. Right? Everything. So it's perception. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we can all get over ourselves and we can all learn something and be better. So Will Smith will be better, I'm sure. And so, so will Chris. When are you uh, writing the book, Patrick? Because I'm need not to. writing the book, man. <laughs> I'm just living, you know, I'm just brother. I'm I'm with I'm with you guys. I'm I'm not ahead of you guys. If anything, I'm 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 behind you guys. I'm I'm with you guys. I wanna I just wanna be the best version of myself. I, I wake up every morning truthfully, sincerely to you gentlemen. I'm, I live a treasured life. I've got nothing I could possibly complain about, right? 
I get to wake up. I got to, I got to be here today. So from that, I got to be my best self and go to sleep and tomorrow wake up. So what do you do on the days, Patrick, that, uh, cause you know, it's impossible to keep up that, that, that streak of every single day being the best version of yourself. We all know, come on. You said yeah. you, you, you don't take an L it's, it's a learn, but yeah. those days, what, what do you do? What, what do you do when you know that day? Just, you know what? We got to put this one behind us. Good question. You guys are great. Uh, you know, uh, when you live a life where you, you, you practice being as present as possible to your life, then you are conscious of those feelings. You become very aware of when those feelings try to stir up. Uh, so there are days where I'll just withdraw. And if I know I'm going to be in a certain space, I'll withdraw and I'll go be with myself or I'll remember, and this is facts, if you ask anybody who lives in my circle, I'll be greater than how I feel. I'll tell my body, okay, you want to feel that way, but I'm going to be greater and I'm going to choose a thought. So if I want to feel sorry for myself, I'm going to be conscious enough to choose something to be thankful for. I'm thankful for my old man. He's 78. He wakes up every morning facing the day. I'm thankful for my mom. So there's so many things that I can switch up on. I could be over here, woe is me. Or I could say, yeah, those feelings, sometimes they play in and I want to feel those. Or I could say, I want to be greater than that today. I want to do something that's, I want to choose something different. So I have a different experience. And from that different experience, I have a different emotion. Right? Science. I have it. I still think you should write a book, man. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm you, this is also. I think great, we, we need to have good. Patrick on every day. Like, I feel so inspired after just five minutes. With I want to tell you guys one thing, and I'm going to shut up. I live. No, no, no. This. this show's about you, my friend. We don't want you shutting up. I, I live, truly live by this. This awareness that we all desire. It's in us all. It's native to us all. The second we arrive here, we all desire that upper evolution. The first thing we all, in most cases, experience when we come out of our mother is love. That's the first thing we encounter. Our mother looks on us. She don't have to say a word. It's all right there. And we as beings coming from that seek to evolve in that and grow in that. We're never our our best when we're shitty and we're negative and we're, we're never our best and we never feel our best. So for me, When I want to change something about myself, I know I have to do something different. Something different has to occur. So it starts with my thoughts, right? Because if you live this way, this is how systematically personhood is made. This is how personality is created, state of being, how one thinks, how one acts, and how one feels. Over a habituation of that, a repetitive thinking, acting, and feeling over the course of days and months and years, that's me. That's my personality. So if I want to change my personality, I got to change my thoughts. So same thoughts create same choices. Same choices create same behaviors. And those same behaviors create the same experiences. And those same experiences create the same emotions. And when I'm feeling a certain way, the mind-body connection is so there, I can only think equal to how I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling this all day, the thoughts I can only think are the thoughts about how I feel all day. And most people are in that loop. So to change that loop, you've got to be greater than how you feel. And you're about, but I feel, I feel, I get it. And those feelings are real, are real. They're not always truthful, but they're real, right? So you feel them. The question is in change, can you be greater than how you feel? Can you think, and when you're feeling awful and insecure, can you say, I'm going to think about being grateful today. I'm going to think about, I woke up, I'm going to think, thank, be thankful for my mom, my job, I paid that bill, whatever it is. I get to choose, right? Right? So now I've made a new, I have a new thought. New thoughts give ways to new choices. New choices give ways to new behavior. New behaviors give ways to new experiences. And those new novel experiences create new thoughts, novel thoughts. 
And the impact of those thoughts on me as a being are universal. Not only is my behavior different, not only am I secreting better hormones, but my genetic signature even grows. Thoughts become things. So if you want to change, you got to be greater than your circumstance. You got to be greater than how you feel. And you've got to become aware of you feeling a certain way all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Dancy, today's Yoda. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, Nick. No, he, like, our motivational speaking. I, Fear I, leads to hate. Hate yeah. leads to anger. Anger leads to the dark side. I, I mean, it's like right there. Yeah, it's, it's a Just formula. Different words. Mm-hmm. You're and right. We all we get the, be- the beautiful thing is we all get to choose. We all have a choice. Period. My girl left the door open. All right. Wow. Man, it's a perfect world. We would end it on that. But hell no. (laughs) We're going to ease off the deep. And by the way, man, you ain't kidding. You know, uh, how could your daughter not come out perfect with a dad like this? That's all I'm saying. Man. You know what's awesome about her? She's perfectly imperfect. And she knows it. How do you uh, apply that train of thought and that mantra of life that you apply to your business endeavors these days? I approach it the same way. I approach it with opportunity. I get to choose to look at the world that I want to reflect. So I don't, I don't approach anything in life in fear. I don't approach anything in survival. I approach it with stepping into the unknown, being the one place where all possibility exists. If I don't know it, I'm not limited by it. If I know it, I got a ceiling. So I don't want to predict it. I want to step into my business and trust that I, with intention and action and the right uh, plans, and I just, I go forward. And when I face a wall, I see the wall and I call it the wall, whatever it is. But I got to know that that's part of my own evolution, that that's there not to stop me. That's there to grow me up. That's there to, to sharpen me. You put gold to the flame, it doesn't consume the, the gold. It refines the gold. Yeah. It makes the gold better. Mm-hmm. So we all put to that flame. It's to do make you walk, us better. Do you walk around the wall, climb it, or smash yourself through it? You know what I do? I blip it and blip out. I use the quantum. I don't <laughs> all right. I blip, blip. <laughs> I'm over there. Dimensional, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Uh, By the way, big old thanks to our sponsor, Great Notion Brewing out of Portland. Uh, They make up the absolute best beer in the history of the world, and you have an opportunity now. Go download the app to search up Great Notion Brewing and get yourself 10% off your order of beer served and delivered to you cold at your doorstep. You get 10% off by entering DadCast10. Did I get that right there, Nick? You did. And right. it's amazing beer, too. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. Nick, have you put together a fast five for Patrick today? I did not. I you did? Uh, no. I, th- I thought we would just keep talking. Like, I, okay. Like, well, I mean, I love the fast five. I, I, it, 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 he, I, I'm trying to get us a little less deep. You yes. know? It's, it's, don't get me wrong. I love these conversations. Well, They're I absolutely talk amazing. I want to talk about legends a little bit. Like, like, okay. Last time we talked, we were... Uh, we were, you had the boots. You had everything. You were. You had an athletic shoe that I've been waiting for. I keep checking the website. Yeah, we're web- so excited. Thank <laughs> you, Nick, for asking. So Legend Footwear is our brand. Our mantra is leave your mark. We sell uh, our first season is a beautiful boot, uh, genuine leather, crazy horse brown. It's called the Leo. We have a new buck black Leo, really beautiful shoes. And then we have a laid back shoe called the Cali, and that comes in new buck, new buck leather and suede. And then our olive green. But the new shoe dropping, I want to say around second week of June, it's called the S2. Very simple. means season two. Uh, It comes in four colorways for men, four colorways for women. We're introducing women. We want to get our legend ladies out there. We want to to engage the women behind the great men, the great women behind them. So um, we're really excited for the shoes. Uh, We have four colorways, nice palette. For the women and a beautiful palette for the men as well. We have some really good colors and we're really excited about the shoe. It'll you'll start seeing it on the site, I would say by mid-May. Okay. And then we're gonna do a pre-sale and then we're gonna go to market. 
Nice. Boom. And yeah. that's it's, I'm definitely ordering some. Like, I'm, I love the boots. Thank you so much. So yeah. What is that web address for everyone listening? It is www.lgndfootwear.com. That LGND stands for legend. We just don't spell it. So that's Boom. It's now in the chat for anyone who comes back to watch this later or now. Check it out, Legend Footwear, lgndfootwear.com. I have a pair of them shoes. Thank you very much, by the way. You, bro. Um, you. They are uh, – I wore the hell out of them during the winter. <laughs> and, and, and now that we're entering spring, I uh, they're going to have to go – back. We're going to get you some best shoes, bro. Okay. Well, yeah, gotta, you know, I'm a got you, tank man. talking shorts now, so I got to get the S2s. We got you, man. Now, uh, do you, what's your favorite? Like, do you like shoes? You like black shoes? Would you wear black shoes? Me? I yeah. Got yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, I got you guys. I got you. All right. Sweet. We have a black shoe. There you go, my man. <laughs> Those are my Darth Vader shoes, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, we. <laughs> Yeah, I've been on a huge Star Wars kick for the past, like, I don't know, 40 years. I love Star Wars, man. I'm really excited that Hayden Christensen's coming back. Is like, it? That, Are we really going to start talking Star Wars right now? Because I'm all in. So, I'm okay. all in. So Hayden okay. Christensen is like one of my favorite actors of all time. Like, that dude is amazing. That and has to be a lie. No, I'm serious. There's no I way in hell, Nick, that Hayden Christensen can be your favorite, one of your favorite actors He's of all in time. My top five. It's just, it's impossible, okay? I mean, Marlon Brando, Keanu, I mean, hello, Hayden Christensen, I'm not letting this one go. Hayden Christensen, like, that kid is amazing. Okay. Can you that just kid, say, like, I really dig he, him. He's a really great actor. I'm a big fan. But favorite yeah. of all time? Even his even his really bad B movies are good. Like, <laughs> Yes, I mean, he's coming back under the suit, man, yes. for Obi Wan, yes. which is now less than like three weeks away from premiering. Really? Yeah, the oh, Disney yeah. Plus Who, Obi Wan series. Obi Wan. That, that freaking Ewan McGregor. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's coming. He's and, and the the greatest thing about how this worked is it set supposedly set about ten years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. But he has aged that same amount of time since filming. So he's actually portraying his age, no makeup that he would have in the timeline of Star Wars it, for the it. events during this. And it's it's going to be amazing. It's, it's. I mean, come on. Vader's back. They're going to meet. And it's mm, it's going to be nuts. Do you see those right there? Do you see, you see that right there on the desk? Yes. Those are lightsabers. <laughs> I can see them. <laughs> now, now, do you go to Comic-Con? No, I haven't been to Comic Con. I actually uh, took the family um, spring break to Disneyland. Okay, uh, gosh, three weeks a month ago, and inside Disneyland is you know Galaxy's Edge, the Star Wars Land. Yeah, and inside Star Wars Land, there's a place called Savvy's Workshop where you can build and construct your own lightsaber, and that's oh, what wow. two of those are up there. Um, I built one a couple of years ago. They're super heavy. We're talking movie prop status, like amazing. Yes. And my son at the time was eight, nine years old. He said, Dad, if we ever go back to Disneyland, can I please make one with you? I said, yes, sir. You bet we're going to go make <laughs> us it. some lightsabers. Yeah. So we went back a couple weeks ago, and I made another one. He made another one. And that's them hanging out back there. And they're tell, not tell cheap. Me about, tell me about the hotel. Aren't they making a hotel? Or is there a hotel already that is full like the thing? Immersive. In Florida, Disney World, it is, uh, what is it? I think it's a, I forget the name of the hotel, but the theme is you are staying on a Galactic Star Cruiser. So it is whole, you know, That's as soon as you walk so in, far. you are immersed. You are on a spaceship and there's all, there's like lightsaber oh. school and all kinds of crazy stuff. I just read that I think five grand a night is about wow. the average going rate for one, this event. And uh, they're not selling too well because that is spendy well how about this guys when when clear channel or someone buys you guys i'm paying let's go rogan you invite me and i'll be one of your guests at the hotel too only if you bring the lady and we get your daughter involved too because i want to pay for let's the whole it. damn family <laughs> let's do it I'm oh gonna man do I'm, it okay i hey, hey that rogan hey. money's got to come now <laughs> come on let's go yeah. If that, you know, again, and I think we discussed this on the last podcast, you know, I'm not in this for the money. Uh, I'm in this to spread 
love and and the message of dad and everything and and oh. talking to guys like you who spread that message that is what i'm in for if money happens to come our way then so be it but if it does um yeah you bet i'm i, I ain't gonna hoard that away it's you know i'm gonna pay for my grandkids college funds and i'm taking patrick on a galactic star cruiser come on yes, let's go <laughs> <laughs> and i'm i'm bringing one of your lightsabers or something okay I gotta show you. It's. It, I gotta see it. Wow! You need to turn out the lights and stuff. You so can get tell. All it's super Great bright. Too. So, first of all, the quality of these things are just, and this is just one of them. And and when you go in, that you get the option. It's like two hundred and fifty bucks to experience this and build a lightsaber. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like a story and a ride. You get to go in this room, and it's, you know, it's really cool and interactive. But you have like four different platforms to choose from: by peace and justice, power and control, all these kinds. And each of the four choices, you get three or four choices for that part, this part, this part, the hilt and the bottom. So it's fully customizable and you can pick the color. Yeah. yeah, man. And I think I went green with this bad boy. No, I went with white, but I bought a bunch of crystals to get, you know, different colors. I love but... it. Hey JP, if you just yeah. explain it, like it's build a bear for dudes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> build a bear for dudes right there. <laughs> and, and to finish up the star Wars talk, um, when we went, uh, we, I bought like four day passes for the family and for five of us, uh, the morning of the last day, I'm going through my phone at the morning coffee and reading articles. And I read a Disney article that they are releasing a, a lightsaber, a brand new one from one of the video game characters in star Wars the next day. And you can only buy it at Disneyland. And I'm like, oh. I don't have tickets for tomorrow, man. What am I going to do? So anyway, long story short, I bought season passes so I could get back in the next day to buy it. And I did. Winner. <laughs> and it's over there. I actually Winner. bought two of them so I could resell it. Here but, you yeah. go. So that was it. my Star Wars thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I am. Yes, sir. I'm all about Star Wars. Same. Nick, come on, man. No Fast Five at all? No, I didn't do a Fast We did a Fast Five right. last time. Like, all right, I don't want to ask the same questions. Patrick, we are we're talking to you just flies by, man. I love it, but I don't love it because now we need to have you on for a third time coming up soon. Let's do it. I'm do going to. to at four, so, you okay? I'm gonna then I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one final deep question. Yes. That I know Patrick's gonna you're gonna love, and I'm expecting a pretty decent answer from you. So no pressure. No. You ready? Yes. What is one piece of advice? Patrick Dancy can give to a new father. If you want to be there, right? If you want to be there, this is to the fathers that really want to be there. Trust yourself and don't judge yourself and enjoy that evolution. Enjoy that whole process. Um, it's not overnight. It's not in one day. It's the whole process. I'm, I'm living that way now. My daughter has different conversations. She's 22. We have a different relationship, but it's still part of the same thing. It's always learning. It's always loving. It's always communicating, right? Yes, sir. There you have it. It's love from the second, the very second yeah. you're born. Yeah, man. I never thought of it that way. And that's what I'm going to take with me um, today and forever. Thanks to you from this conversation Thank we had today. Brother on dadcast i love you guys dude just, oh man i love you too love you. It, it's it's so darn correct darn. i said morning. darn you see that's the dad coming out of me it's so him. friggin' damn correct that and i said friggin', um that it, it is immediate love yeah the second you're born and anything else is it's, it's learned and hate shouldn't be learned man mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Patrick J. Dancy. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time you, once brothers. again, man. We love you so much. You are the man. Have me back. I'll be back. I'm going to be coming back with gifts like shoes and stuff, but you'll have them. Yes. So you can talk about them. We love we gotta, gifts. We've got to figure out an in-person. We've got to hang out together. Yes. You're in New York, right? No, I'm in Florida. You're in Florida now. You were in oh, New York oh. last time we talked, right? Yes. I'm all over. Where in Florida? Central Florida. 
Central. So my sister just moved <laughs> to the villages. Oh, I know the villages. Villages is about an hour from here. Okay, so it's like a retirement yeah, like, they're, they're area. Yeah, they're at the villages. Those those retirees. So yeah, <laughs> they're all like <laughs> they know what's so, going on. That's why it's called the villages. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> and I go to Florida once a year with the lady. We always end up going down to the Keys and in Hollywood down south because the fish tacos are are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but the Father's Day episode. We're yes. going to be recording it here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'd love to have you on for that yeah. second one. I'm here. Everyone. I'm so here. I think that'll be the next time uh, we all chat together. Um, and then, yeah, we we'll just go from there, man. We need to a Vegas trip. We need to get Hawkins involved, Patrick yeah. involved. I'll meet in Vegas. Let's get them all involved, man. And <laughs> pull like, I don't know, like a fight night or, ooh, a Raider game. Hey, and, and there's... So there's and I'll talk to you guys offline, but there's a, a, a father um, that I know, very successful young man, good dad, young young dad of three, and is in it. And I'll tell you guys offline, he's an awesome guy. You, you guys need to meet him for sure, for sure. Well, okay. let's meet him when we put him on the show. How about that, yes. Apple? Cool. Oh wow! Yeah, you see, look at this man. <laughs> look at those watch. things, man. <laughs> Gun show. Look, look at that. Let's go. Let's go. Nick looks like Bane from the Batman comics. I know. I love it. I love his look. His I'm look, trying to get the more definition his, going. Nick, your look, honestly, brother, is so Black Ops. So Black <laughs> Ops. So Seal Six, man. And I'm so so Seal Six. And I'm oh, like I like it. For you. I got that for you. There you go. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I do need to disclose as soon as I hit finish live. It cuts us all off, so there's no chit-chatting afterwards. So I want to say now, Patrick, again, thank you. Nick, yes. uh, email each other and get the information from your guy. We'd love to schedule him and get him on and learn a little bit more about who he is, yeah, obviously, before we get, get him on. Um, <laughs> to everyone who has hung out and watched and hung out with us today, thank you so much for your love and your support. We appreciate you. If you're watching this on the YouTube, uh, like it up, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and we'll see all of you on the very next episode. Patrick, you demand. Thank you. Love you guys. See you soon. We'll see you. All right. See you. Bye -bye.